When I said this was a barn find, this was really a barn find. That's, that's hay bales next to a 69 Charger 500 and a real 70 Superbird. How about this? In a actual barn. See? Hay. That's actual hay. 1970 Plymouth Superbird. You can see the wing supports and everything. And a real 1969 Charger 500. When I said this was a barn find, this was really a barn find. That's, that's hay bales next to a 69 Charger 500 and a real 70 Superbird. That's just crazy. All right, here we are at a barn in uh, the Midwest, looking at a 1969 Charger 500 and a 1970 Superbird. These are both owned by Scott, and uh, he's gonna tell us, uh, how did you uh, get the 500, sir? Uh, well, I was 17 years old, I'm 53 now. Uh, it was advertised in the, the Milwaukee Journal on Sunday morning, not in the the sports or classics car section, but just in the automobiles for sale. And it was listed as a 1969 Dodge, nothing else. <laughs> uh, so I called the guy up and I asked him what, what model Dodge it was. He said it was a Charger, but it was, it was different. Somebody, he figured somebody had put a different grill in it okay and uh well my heart started racing so i uh -huh. i grabbed all the cash i could scrape together and ran down there and i pulled in the dr the guy's driveway behind it and saw the rear window and then oh you know, I, my. I couldn't get the, the cash out of my pocket fast enough drove the car home it was a really driving car when i when i bought it really wow and so you took it home and then i mean obviously it's on a few pieces now but i mean it's pretty solid all the way around yeah it's a it's a complete car i have everything for it i um you know a it's young, a young kid i was gonna start restoring it and, and started working on it and then life got in the way and, and started living huh. my life and but it's a 440 four speed car. It's all original, basically, other than, you know, some crappy repaint over the original green. But uh, otherwise, yeah, like you said, I mean, I looked it over and it's pretty darn together in one piece. The four speed's still in there. You'll see that in another video. But, uh, and what about the Superbird, sir? How did you pick that thing up? The Superbird, I, I was friends with a, a guy at the, the same time. Uh, I was like 17 years old and he was a member of the Wing Warriors superbird club the oh, national yeah. superbird club and somebody had it advertised in their classics uh, somewhere around cedar rapids iowa oh wow okay so uh it, it was in a barn pretty much just like you see it here okay um except the the motor and transmission were in it it the the motor was tight and uh and the, the, so it's a numbers matching 440 six pack. And I forget, it's a four speed or an automatic? It's a automatic on the car. What I figured they, and it, it's showing only 32,000 original miles on the clock. Of course. What what happened is, is they somehow blew the motor, or ran it tight, and then they, they parts the car out or they took all the Superbird stuff off and put it on a, 
uh, satellite or something or yeah or a road runner so it wasn't no three weeks four weeks after i i got the car home i found a new old stock wing oh uh, and, just find those and a new old stock uh nose cone oh cool so that's awesome man and so how, when did this all go down i mean when did you pick it up well about the same time i bought the charger yeah I, wow okay I, I had the charger first and then it was like three months later i man that was a, a friend's flatbed ford truck and drove to cedar cedar rapids and that's pulled it out of the barn man you don't hear about that stuff anymore but you're currently rebuilding the engine for the Superbird. So, I mean, these, they look like they've been sitting, but you're actually doing work on them, you said. Yeah, yeah I mean, for three and a half decades, I, I really didn't touch them, didn't have the time or the money. And, and now I'm, you know, all my kids are adults and gone. And, you know, I have the resources finally to... to to put it together yeah it just goes to show that not every barn pine is just made to rot away he's actually working on this car and probably i mean i've seen some of his work out front it, it will get done pretty quick i'm sure Let's see here what we got You can see the holes where the wing used to go. He has the wing and the nose. They're just not on the car. Oh, the nose is in the basement? <coughs> of course. Here's the open engine compartment where Scott, the owner, had pulled the 446 pack out of to rebuild. Here's the spare nose sitting in the basement and a spare wing piece but scott was so excited that i was excited about the car he actually brought the car out of the barn on a wednesday brought it to the muscle car and corvette nationals on thursday where it was a big hit at the show one best barn find find at the show and uh, made a whole bunch of magazines so you just never know what's going to happen with these cool cars this one did go back in the barn for now but you never know um and if you want to buy my book, it's still on Amazon.com. And of course, you can contact me through all my social media contacts in the description below.